Today we will talk about the reproductive stages of cattle. There are a few different stages a female will go through in her life. The first starts with prepubertal, which are non-cycling growing heifers. Then comes puberty, which is the first estrus cycle, and estrus cycles are even intervals that occur every 21 days. After the estrus cycle occurred, after the estrus cycles occur, they are able to get pregnant, which is known as gestation. And there are no estrus cycles. After they are pregnant, um, and they have a calf, it's known as parturition, and then there will be the postpartum interval, which is the interval after calving. They are not cycling, and this is highly dependent on whether or not they're nursing. There's also a phenomenon that can occur called non-pubertal estrus. In some heifers, the first estrus of their life is not followed by ovulation. This phenomenon is known as non-pubertal estrus. Then a number of the following estrus cycles may be silent, which means they have ovulated but haven't shown physical signs of heat. Palpation and hormone analysis would help determine the existence of the events mentioned above. So the estrus cycle is very important to the phases of reproduction because it gives the females a chance to become pregnant approximately every 21 days. During each cycle, Follicles develop in wave-like patterns that are controlled by hormonal levels. The corpus luteum, also known as the CL, develops after the ovulation of the follicle. The dominant follicle will produce estrogen and cause physical signs of heat to occur. This stage of the ester cycle is known as estrus. During day four, of the estrus cycle, a corpus hemorrhagium is, is present as well as a corpus albicans and a wave of small developing follicles on the ovaries. This stage is known as metestrus. Met Day seven is known as diestrus and the CL will be present. By day 18, the CL starts to, reg to regress and is known as proestrus and the ovaries begin to prepare for another cycle. Prostaglandin is released by the non-gravid uterus. If the uterus isn't healthy enough and is pus-filled, it is called pyometra. It will not release prostaglandin and prevent another heat cycle from happening. Here are the physical signs of heat. Here's a short clip. Rations should meet all of the dietary requirements of the various animals on the farm without provoked placement. One important component of reproductive management and the topic of this presentation is that of estrus detection. Without efficient and successful estrus detection, dairy heifers and cows would have extended periods of non-productivity. Estrus detection failure leads to low conception rates or missed breeding opportunities of heifers and cows. For cows, low conception rates and missed breedings lead to extended calving intervals. It's been estimated that if cows are not bred back by day 85 postpartum, the dairy farmer loses from between two and three dollars per day per cow thereafter. It is also possible to use heat synchronization for other methods besides flushing methods. Many artificial insemination programs will be used by breeders for higher success rates during their breeding season. For most mature cows, a seven-day co-seed cedar program is used. Cedar is an acronym for controlled internal drug release and is a progesterone product. So on day zero, the cedar is inserted and a GnRH is administered. GnRH stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone. Cicerillin is a common GnRH product. Then the cedar is left in for seven days. On day seven, the cedar is pulled and prostaglandin is injected. Lutolysis is a common prostaglandin product. Then for timed AI, 60 to 66 hours later, GnRH is given followed by artificial insemination. 
And then here is an example of the cedar. And here is Sister Rowan, and here is Ludolice. So for heifers, a different protocol is used. For heifers, a 14-day cedar protocol is used. On day zero, you insert the cedar and leave it in for 14 days. You pull the cedar on the 14th day. 16 days after, which would be approximately 30 days, an injection of prostaglandin is given. And on six, about 66 to 68 hours later, give or take, um, GNRH is administered followed by AI. There are a few benefits to using the 14-day protocol for heifers. The first is that the use of the cedar implant for 14 days can induce cycling in heifers that may not have been cycling previously. This occurs only after the cedar is pulled. Another great benefit of this protocol is that pre-breeding vaccinations can be given this, at this time to reduce time and stress on the animals. It may also be a good time to do physical examinations of the animals and call any females that aren't fit to breed to save time and money. Many producers find heat synchronizations to be more time and cost effective. And there on my work site.